Hey friends, it's Shirley Bobshaw and today I want to show you how easy it is to create new rose plants from one plant. Come in closer. Take a look at all of these beautiful roses. Look at these yellow floribundas full of these beautiful cluster roses. And then I've got miniatures here. You can make these too. Or some of these long stem roses. Do you ever wonder, what does it take to create a new plant? Not much. Check this out. This is all you need. Number one, take a plant that you want to uh, duplicate. So here we have a miniature rose. And the reason why this one is going to be a good one to work with, if you want to come in closer, let me show you something. This is a miniature rose, but you can tell some of these roses are fading. They're kind of, you know, on their way out. That's perfect. You want to select a, ro uh, a stem that has a fading flower, preferably. It doesn't have to, but that's best. And then notice here that it has a few leaves. One here, it's got another set here, two, three, four, five. It's got a few sets of leaves, which I like. What you're going to do is you're going to take clippers that are really sharp. Let me get to the bottom of this one. And I'm gonna cut, let's see if you can come in and see this. Here's, can you see this little node? It looks like a bump. That's where leaves emerge and that's where I want our new roots to emerge. So I'm gonna get right in here and I'm gonna cut underneath it. There we go. So I've got a nice, I don't know, probably a seven, eight inch cutting. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna cut off the flower because really what we want to do is we want to give an assignment to this cutting and that is to start forming roots we don't care about the rose staying perky and pretty so we cut that off now something that I'm going to do is remove some of the lower leaves because ideally I want to stick this into soil deeply and I want to make sure that we don't have any rotting so I'm going to cut these off and then now if you come even closer I want to show you an important step that not too many people do. I'm gonna wound the bottom about a half an inch. You see how I'm just kind of uh, peeling away the layer there and then on this side too. Now what happens here, this prompts, you know, all those hormones and all those great nutrients that are in this stem to rush over to this side to try to heal it. And of course, with all that activity, we're gonna encourage some root growth. So there we go. And so now, here I have a cutting. Now, you can take multiple cuttings from a plant, but I recommend that you have a glass with you with water so that you don't dry them out. So if you're not gonna stick them in the soil immediately, make sure you put them in water. Okay, so now, I'm ready to stick this in the soil. What am I gonna do? I am going to take a small container, nothing too large. I can actually get three or, or four different cuttings in here. And what's really important is that it's wet. You must make sure that the soil is wet and it's just regular potting soil, okay? And so what I'm gonna do now, I wounded it, come on closer. I'm gonna get some rooting hormone. And this is a really great powder that encourages roots to grow. It has special auxins and hormones that stimulate root growth. So just put a little bit on the tip there. And then now what's really important is I'm gonna stick this into the soil, but I don't wanna stick it like this because I don't wanna scrape away any of the hormone powder that I just uh, put on here. So what I'm gonna do is take a little dowel, make a little incision. Can you see my hole? Nice. Make it nice and deep, just like that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in as far as I can, and then I'm gonna tamp it down. And remember, the soil is moist, must be. Because we don't have any roots, we want to create a humid area around the plant to keep it from drying out. So that's where the fun comes in. You've seen these, wait a minute, here it goes. Big old water bottles. Well, when it's done, cut it in half. Keep the top, and this is going to become a makeshift greenhouse. Oh yeah, it works really well. And so here's a few things you can consider. I can just go ahead and put this on it just like that. But what I really want to do is I want to make sure that these leaves are not, you know, crushed up against here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this out in, a, in, in the outdoors. And I'm not going to put it in direct sun, but I want to make sure that it doesn't, you know, magnify and, you know, burn it up. So what I'm going to do, 
though I am leaving some leaves on here, I'm gonna take this one off. You can go ahead and take some of the leaves off the tips. And the purpose of the leaves in uh, these cuttings is, remember, they're like solar panels. As, as they are outdoors, they absorb the light rays. Photosynthesis creates energy. Energy for what? For rooting. Okay, so we're doing that, but we don't want to crush our leaves. So, no, not that one, this one. We're gonna cover it, and then now, I am ready to take this outdoors. Now, really important, don't put it in direct sunlight. Put it in a patio, you know, where it's shaded, but it gets maybe morning sun. And really important to check it daily to make sure that there's condensation on here. Because remember how we watered the soil? That shows us that this is still has that greenhouse effect. The moment you don't see any condensation, it's time to water it, okay? And then what's gonna happen? Come on over here, let me show you the wonder of plant life. So here we got our original plant light. I stuck three of them in here, and that's, that's stage one. Of course, this goes outside, but let me show you what happens. Around four weeks later, I'm gonna get you get, coming really close. I'm gonna take this out. We've got roots. That is what you want. Now, I don't want you to remove all your little plants to check them, but what you're gonna do in three or four weeks is you're gonna come to your plant and you're just gonna kinda see if you can tug it out and if it's resisting you. That's good news. That means it's got some roots. And so this is what you can expect to see in a miniature rose. These are three cuttings. This is probably about three months later. You see that there's a little more leaf growth and you certainly can expect some flowers. And here at the end of the summer, this is its first season, you can have a miniature rose plant with flowers that you created from cuttings. Now, how fun and how easy was that? All right, friends, go on out, garden, create some new plants just like this, and I'll see you back on Eden Makers here on Facebook.